Hello and welcome to Gadget Joe and today we're taking a look at a Z790 board that's quite hard to come by. In today's video we're taking a look at a Z790 motherboard that is quite often difficult to find. Uh, certainly so in the US market. Now I recently acquired this through a friend over at uh, Andy over at eTechnics. Again I'll link it down in the description below. But this motherboard is something quite unique. It's something that I wanted for myself, for my personal builds and obviously for doing testing. Now this board, what makes this board slightly different is it utilises a full white PCB. Now that's something that used to happen quite a lot but it doesn't really happen very often nowadays which is a bit of a shame because white components, white motherboards, white cases all that just look absolutely fantastic. They look quite sterile which is fair enough for some people but they just have that little bit of an edge to them. So what we have here is the CVN Z790D5. Now for those that don't know what CVN is it's a sub-brand of Colourful. You're probably likely to have heard them before when it comes to graphics cards. They also do some other components, but what we have here is one of their motherboards. Now, in a moment, I'm going to change the camera view so we can really take a look at what's on the board and see what exactly this board has to offer. I will stress that this is not a review video, this is simply an unboxing and overview, and I'll go through in detail all the slots, all the ports, and everything that's on this motherboard. Now, a few things to note before we go into that. This is an LGA 1700 slot board, which is compatible with 12th and 13th and potentially 14th gen. It is DDR5, which is what the D5 stands for in the name. So it's DDR5 compatible and it's, it takes up to 192 gigabytes over dual channel at 7000 megahertz per second. Now obviously it can be overclocked slightly higher if needed, but then you'll need to look into things like overclocking the voltage, it does also feature PCIe Gen 5, that's up to 512 gigabytes of transfer speed, that's two times more than previous generations, and it does also have something that really tied me towards this, four Gen 4 NVMe M.2 slots built onto the motherboard, and all of them are Gen 4. It's not just one Gen 4 and a couple of other ones that are Gen 3, they are all Gen 4. For my line of work that works perfectly because I do review a lot of hard drives or SSDs, NVMEs and it means that I can put more than one in at once and also test multiple at the same time to really put them against each other. It is Wi-Fi enabled, it does have two AX201 chips which means that it can take up to 2.4 gigabytes per second transfer speed and that is obviously Wi-Fi 6. On the VRIO it does also have two Gen 2 USB 3.2 sockets, one of them being a Type C for 20 gigabytes per second transfer speed and the other a Type A for 10 gigabytes transfer speed. Now that we've looked at some basics of it, let's get the box open and really take a look at the board itself. Let's begin with the box itself. The box is pretty simple, it's just a basic white with grey accents and a rather low resolution photo on there. The box itself is very quite simple, it's just simple branding. You've got information including the chipset. On the rear there is a plethora of information, all the basic information of stuff that you need to know from the CPU chipset, the memory, the storage, the expansion slots and all the information about the board. You do have some information about the protection of the board. Now it says here that you've got six times protection against over voltage protection, anti high temperature, anti static, anti thunder, anti humidity and a transient voltage suppressor so it should work quite well in keeping everything nice and safe. I do know that this board does include some surge protection right out of the box as well. It is also drop tested and plug tested. Then you've got temperature, humidity test, compatibility, vibration, all the usual sort of spiel that you get on a motherboard to basically explain everything that you've got on there. So let's get it open and take a look. Opening it up, you get the motherboard itself. And as you can see, it looks absolutely fantastic. I'll take that out in a moment because before then, we're gonna take a look at the rest of the box. Now inside there, in the middle, you get a user manual in assorted languages, it's usually Chinese and English. You get everything you need to know on that, you get a CD, DVD, 
for the uh, drivers for it. Not many people use these anymore, but obviously it's nice to know that you get them with it. On this side, you get three white SATA cables. Now that's a nice, interesting addition because I've seen a couple of white motherboards before that included black SATA cables, which just didn't really make any sense. So it's a nice little addition. On this side, you get a an assortment of things. We're going to start off with the most obvious and that is of course these two Wi-Fi antennas. They obviously plug into the back, these do not plug into the PCIe, they plug into the back on the motherboard itself in the rear I.O. And they are quite nice and sturdy, they feel quite decent quality and then that will really increase the range of your Wi-Fi. You then get a USB 2 header, well it's an extension header, I don't not, not entirely sure why you've got that in there. I suppose you could plug it in and then plug it in afterwards, but it's just a bit odd. You also get three standoffs and three tiny screws for all those M2 slots. Then you get a power header connector, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, something I've complained a lot about, and I know a lot of other people complain about, is the fact that when it comes to mounting your motherboard to a system, to your case, sorry, plugging everything in is always a nightmare because you've got to get the right pins in the right place, you've got to get the plus and the minus, everything right. So something like this is absolutely fantastic. All you have to do now is basically plug everything into this little block here and then you just plug it into the connector on the motherboard. You then also get a proprietary three pin, five volt RGB connector, which I'm not too sure. I, think, I believe that might be potentially Bamel Take or Corsair, one of the brands, not 100% certain, but yeah, that's nice to have in there as well. So let's get these back in here and then we're gonna take a look at the motherboard itself. And now we have the motherboard itself. And as you can see, it's an absolutely stunning board. As I mentioned before, it is a white PCB board. That means the whole PCB is indeed white. It's got rid of a lot of all these extra little lines that you usually see, which not normally roots down to certain parts of a motherboard. It's just an overall nice, clean look. You do have this brushed aluminium effect on all the shields and the heat guards. And then also you get this unique copper plate in the middle of both these parts here, which obviously help to dissipate the heat off the MOSFETs. And overall, it's such a nice, clean, simple design. On the left here, you get some branding, which if I really get close, you can sort of see it's got a holographic effect to it. At the top there, it does say, very nice. <laughs> very nice. High five. <laughs> And it is overall a very nice board. I will get to more of the functionality in a moment. On the rear of the motherboard, let's turn this over, you can see it's nice and clear. It's all white with a few contact points obviously for the soldering, for the relevant chipsets. And it is just really nice and clean. So now we're going to take a look at the IO connectivity of the motherboard of the CBN Z790D5. At the top here you have 12 uh, or an 8 and a 4 pin EPS connector. Now something that is quite uh, concerning for myself, not concerning as such, it obviously works, but more for the fact that I'm OCD, it does have a slightly offset 4 pin connector here, which I'm not 100% certain why they've done that, but you've got an 8 and a 4 pin here. Then you have this heat spreader here, covering and taking away the heat from the MOSFETs, the capacitors and everything it needs to. Moving along, you then get the CPU fan here, and the chassis fan here. Moving on once again, you get a 12 volt RGB header. Now there are two 12 volt RGB headers on this board and there are also two 5 volt RGB headers on this board. And then next we see the AIO pump header here. So it is quite a bit of a distance away from the socket, which I'm not entirely certain why they've done that, but it's that's how it is. Next we have a 24 pin ATX power connector here. You have a USB 3 connector. This is USB 3.2, but it's only Gen 1, so you're limited to 5 gigabytes per second here. You then get a USB Type-C connector for the internal connector on the board here. This one, once again, is 3.2, but it's Gen 1, so again, only five gigabytes of speed through here. You then get six SATA ports on the side. Going along the bottom of the motherboard, you start off with the other 12 volt RGB connector on the far end here. Next, you get that front panel connector, 
which with the extender that you had in the box, you'd be able to connect to that all through there. You then get the first of two 5 volt ARGB connectors here. And then just above that, there is a clear CMOS button, which you can tap to clear the CMOS, obviously. You then get a JME header, and then an RGB LED control switch. Now what this does is you can simply take this little cap and move it along and that will turn off the RGB for the motherboard, keep it back as where it is and that will allow the motherboard to synchronize with the RGB and show the RGB available. You then get the JBIOS header and two USB 2 headers here. Next to that is the JCOM header and the ESPI header next to that. Then you get one more channel fan connector to the left of that. Then you get the final 5 volt ARGB connector here and last but not least you get the audio connector at the end. So as mentioned before this is the CPU socket that is an LGA 1700 socket capable of working with 12th gen, 13th gen and the newer 14th gen coming along shortly. To the right of that you get 4 DIMM slots that work in dual channel there is a total of 192 gigabytes available for this motherboard that shows through 48 gigabytes per dim slot obviously as i mentioned before they do work in dual channel and it does right out the box allow for up to 7000 megahertz per second ddr5 ram speeds coming to the lower half of the motherboard you start off with that aforementioned pcie gen 5 16 slot here it does have a armor plate on it as does the one below for really keeping the graphics card nice and secure just below that you do get a PCIe3 Gen 1 slot, and there's one just below that on the bottom here. This one here is actually a PCIe Gen 4, but it's only an X4 slot, so you won't be able to put another graphics card in there. Well, you will, but you won't get the full potential of that graphics card. So if you're looking to obviously have dual graphics cards, probably not the best choice for you on this one. Last but not least, we get the four M2 slots on the motherboard. That comes in the first one here, then there, then two underneath this one here. I'm just going to take the heat shields off now so we can take a closer look at what you get underneath there. And now you can get a better look of what they look like and the access available for each NVMe drive here. They are, as aforementioned, all Gen 4, which is such a nice, interesting addition to see. They do feature this little safety latch here, which means that you don't have to have an extra screw on there. It just locks everything into place and that is available on this one, this one and this one but not this one for some strange reason. There is one tiny detail, if you're going to get this motherboard because you do fully intend to use all four slots, you do need to take a look at the size of the drives themselves. Not in terms of storage but physical size. All of these slots support 2242 and 2280 drives. Now obviously if you're not sure what that means, basically it's 22mm wide and 42mm long or 80mm long for the longer ones. These three drive slots here do support 2260 but this one does not. So if you're going to use all four, you need to bear in mind that this one doesn't support the full range of sizes. Last but not least, let's take a look at the rear I.O. of the motherboard. Starting to the left you get the display port and the HDMI port. You then get a BIOS update reset button here. You do then get four USB 3.2 Gen 1 USB slots and the bottom one is for the BIOS update. Then you get a Type-C USB 3.2. This is the Gen 2 that I mentioned earlier that allows up to 20 gigabytes per second transfer speed. The one above it is a USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 2 for 10 gigabytes per second. You do have onboard networking capable of up to 10 gigabytes speeds. Then two USB 2 ports. You do then get the Wi-Fi connector headers here to allow you to connect the aerials that we saw in the box earlier. Then you do get the final audio ports on the bottom here. And that pretty much wraps it up for this video of the colourful CVN Z790 D5 Gaming Frozen unboxing and overview. As you can see, it is an absolutely stunning board. It's going to look fantastic in an all-white build, featuring those little black accents and the copper accents. Something that you don't see very often nowadays is those copper accents. don't actually know if I know of any other boards that have the copper accents. But yeah, it's such a fantastic looking quite unique looking board and it's definitely something that is going to be vitally useful for myself and I know a lot of people are quite interested in this board because in the US it's quite hard to get hold of in fact even in the UK it's quite difficult to get hold of they, they do sell them they are still available on certain sites and I will link in the description below where you can currently get your hands on one but they are not very often seen to get an all white motherboard with a white PCB is something that should be more often seen. 
overall I'm mega impressed with everything and how it looks. Overall I am incredibly impressed with the overall quality of the board itself. I can't wait to get it set up in a system. You're going to see it more often because it's going to be my primary motherboard and then I'm going to be doing a lot of testing. I'm going to be fully utilising all four of those NVMe drives. And yes that's pretty much it. So if you want to get your hands on one go to that link in the description. That's pretty much it for this video. I've been Gadget Joe. This has been a colourful CBN Z790 D5 gaming frozen motherboard and until next one goodbye